Hank for Free Podcast Tools, and I've lined up six microphones to put side by side by side by side by side by side. I hope I did that right. To determine what's the best budget microphone. Now, I've already reviewed these microphones individually, so I am just going to give you my brief overview on each of the microphones and let you hear them and make your own decision. First up on the boom already, this is the Shure MV7X. It's a cardioid polar pattern and it has a frequency response of 50 hertz to 16 kilohertz. The microphone retails for 179 US dollars. To me, the sub $200 broadcast format with the Shure branding on there is a very affordable way to go for your live stream or podcast. And if you end up getting its bigger sibling, the Shure SM7B, putting this one on the co-host boom is definitely no slouch. I think the sound overall is really smooth and doesn't require a bunch of processing to make it sound good. On the cons, the microphone can be somewhat of a plosive magnet, I would say, if you are not using good microphone technique or if you just happen to get excited. The included windscreen leaves a lot to be desired. And some people have a little problem with me considering this a budget microphone at $179 US dollars. Next up, it's the Zoom ZDM1. The Zoom ZDM1 has a super cardioid polar pattern with a frequency response of 50 hertz to 18 kilohertz. The microphone's regular retail price is 79 US dollars, but it goes on sale constantly for 49 US dollars. As far as pros, the price is ridiculous. I have bought four of these microphones. Three are in the hands of co-hosts and then one for myself. The ZDM1 comes with a real windscreen included. The microphone has a solid build quality. Maybe not as identifiable as a Shure MV7X or some other microphones, but it's no slouch on camera. And then to me, I love the sound. I don't think it requires any EQ or post-production or onboard processing during a live stream or podcast. I think the sound is sweet as is. I know it's going to sound cliche, but when it comes to cons, I really don't have any. For the price, me buying four of these for 200 bucks and legitimately liking the sound, I just don't think you can go wrong with this microphone. But that's my personal opinion. What do you think? Chime in in the comments down below. This is the Zoom ZDM1. Next, this is the Rode PodMic. The Rode PodMic has a cardioid polar pattern and a frequency response listed 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. The microphone retails for 99 US dollars. This is the best looking budget microphone I've ever seen. The build quality is unparalleled. It's built like an absolute tank and weighs in at over two pounds. I also think the microphone has solid as is sound quality. On the cons, however, if you don't work the microphone properly, it can be prone to plosives, and you wouldn't want to put a windscreen or a pop filter in front of this beautiful looking microphone. Another con that most people don't think about is you better have a legitimate boom arm or desk mic stand that can handle the heavy weight. And it could just be my opinion, even though the sound is solid as is, I think this microphone really excels when you add some EQ and post-production, maybe some onboard compression while you're live streaming or podcasting. I think it really sweetens the tonality of the microphone when you add processing to it. Do you agree with me that it is the best looking microphone in the budget category and heck, maybe even above and beyond? This thing is gorgeous. Ro did a fantastic job with it. But chime in in the comments down below with your thoughts on the Rode PodMic. Next up, we have the PreSonus. PD-70. The PreSonus PD-70 has a cardioid polar pattern. The frequency response is listed at 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. The price tag, $129.95 US dollars. Some of the pros, the microphone is well constructed. It's yet another brick at 1.87 pounds. I do like the look that they went for when designing this microphone. I'm personally a fan of the half yoke. Some people are not. We'll get to that in just a second. There's also an urban legend out there that says this microphone uses the same capsule as the Rode Procaster, which is about a $230 microphone. Whether that's true or not, I have no idea. And I've heard this microphone sound fantastic on other people's voices. Con-wise, 
on my particular voice, I think there's a little bit of a shrillness, a little bit of sibilance that I don't get from some of the other microphones that I've put on the boom. In my situation, this microphone most certainly benefits from onboard processing like DSing. And for me, that's a con. That's another step I have to take where I would prefer to just have whatever the natural sound is. And depending on how your setup is oriented, if I had it on this side, the half yoke and knob would be facing me. And online, I've heard some people complain about that, that it's not a full yoke or you can't change the side of the half yoke. To me, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but just putting that out there. As always, how do you like the sound? Where do you rank it compared to the other microphones I've had on the boom already? This is the PreSonus PD-70. Now, I'm on the Tascam TM-70. This microphone has a super cardioid polar pattern and a frequency response listed at 30 hertz to 20 kilohertz. The microphone initially retailed for 99 US dollars, but now I'm seeing it everywhere for 79 US dollars. Couple pluses that I have for this microphone, I think that it has a unique sound. I really struggle to try to find the words to explain to people what I think this microphone sounds like. I can't recall listening to a dynamic microphone that has ever really sounded in this particular way. And I hope that translates through YouTube's compression to where you kind of get that sense of, yeah, that's a different sound. To me, it sounds different than any dynamic microphone that I've used. I'm not saying the sound is totally good, but I'm not saying it's bad at all. And the only other real plus I have for this microphone is that it comes with this shock mount included. I had to reduce the gain way down from all the other microphones that I've used in this test. So this thing requires very little gain in order to get it to a good high level. On the cons though, the build quality and this thin design leaves a lot to be desired for me. I did this in the review video where I hold up the SM58 and this microphone is really not that much bigger than the stage microphone by sure. To me, that's a turnoff. I'd rather have a bigger, better build, but it looks like they got a microphone body from one of the cheaper manufacturers and it's just not up to snuff. And to me, price-wise, even at $79, still too high for me. In my opinion, this should be a $50 microphone max. And also, I really wouldn't put this on anybody's radar. That's just my opinion. Chime in in the comments down below if you've had a better experience with the Tascam TM70. If you're getting value from this video, please subscribe to the channel. Many more review videos coming up very soon and a lot of other content that I think you're going to find very intriguing. Lastly, we have the MXL BCD-1. This microphone has a cardioid polar pattern and a frequency response of 40 hertz to 15 kilohertz. The microphone retails for $149.95 US dollars. The only plus I have for this microphone is the build quality and look. Outside of the plastic knobs and the flimsy feeling yoke, the microphone itself has a nice build and look. On the cons, in my review I talked about the egregious plosives that this microphone picks up. Not a fan at all. I'm also not a fan of the sound quality. Just for my particular voice, I couldn't get this dialed in at all and that's where the buck stops for me on this microphone. I'm just not a fan at all. I would never recommend this microphone to anyone at any price. That's just me. If you have a different opinion on the MXL BCD-1, please chime in in the comments down below. Just a microphone that does not work at all for me. And this will probably be the last appearance in any of my videos that you'll see this MXL BCD-1. But what do you think? Do you have a different opinion on the sound quality? Chime in in the comments down below. If you've already subscribed to my channel, it's no secret that I'm a huge fan of the Zoom ZDM1. It's the microphone I recommend to any live streamer, podcaster that's looking to save a buck, but still wants to have good, solid sound quality. I think the Zoom ZDM1 is the best budget microphone out there. However, there's no denying that the Shure MV7X is an excellent option for your budget microphone needs. Bar none, I think the Zoom ZDM1 is the best budget. I could definitely see going with the Shure MV7X while those two duke it out for first. Vying for third for me would be the Rode Pod Mic. Just the build quality, the style is just amazing. 
I've seen YouTubers with millions of subscribers talking into these babies. They look and sound the part as well. Those would be my top three microphones. Are you going for the look? Are you going for the budget? Are you going for brand recognition? Obviously, that choice is up to you. But to me, the Zoom ZDM1 is the best budget microphone currently. Videos I have coming up, you've heard of Super Chats for YouTube. Well, I have something even cooler for podcasting. Should you record in WAVE or MP3? And coming very soon, my long-awaited review of the A10 Mic Live. But if you end up going with the Shure MV7X, watch this next video where I modify the windscreen so it's not such a plosive magnet. Thank you.